Good morning, everyone. Today is our town council regular meeting, Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, 8 a.m. in the town hall green room. We all now stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, on to item number two, which is visitors. Are there any visitors that would like to be recognized at this time? Okay, any visitors or anybody that wants to talk today, please go over to the microphone here so that they can get you on uh, the video in the audio. Uh, good morning, Council. Uh, I'm Tom Schultz. I'm the chair of the Human Rights Committee. I, I just have a brief statement I'd like to read. I'm here to endorse the two student advisor applicants, Jose Rodriguez and Leah Scopa, who are on the council agenda this morning for your approval. Jose Rodriguez, known to friends and family as Abel, is a junior at Morgan and ranked fourth in his class academically. Abel is a member of the Morgan Justice Club and serves as the Board of Education student representative. He has been recently selected as one of the new Poet Laureate interns. Leah Scope is also an academic achiever at Morgan. She was a founding member of the Morgan Justice Club when it was created last year. A stand-up sophomore, Leah is a writer and reporter for the student newspaper, The Morgan Paw Print. Among her broad interests and achievements, Leah performs in modern dance competitions. Six remarkable students applied for these two seats on the Human Rights Committee, which gives me great hope for the future of our community and choosing only two was a difficult process, but I am confident our very first student advisors have much to offer. I hope you will agree and approve their appointments. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Any other visitors? Yes. Phil. Good morning, uh, council. Good morning, Mr. Town Manager. Good morning, Ms. Scatino. We miss you greatly. Uh, I just want to say that I didn't realize how much I missed this till I walked in here this morning, but I'm sure after attending a few meetings I will be cured of that <laughs> feeling. But, uh, but it is nice to be here and I'm glad we're meeting in person and I wish you uh, well and to have a good meeting and make decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Good morning. My name is Jane Scully Welch, and I would like to be considered. I'm not sure it's on the agenda, but for the Blight Complaint Committee or Board. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I'd Jane. like to be considered. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. We'll move on to now number th item number three, which is the approval of the minutes for the, from the November 17th, 2021 meeting. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. A second. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? You want a roll call? And then we good with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, item number four, which is the appointments and reappointments. Um, so we have obviously a, a whole bunch of items here. Uh, the first on the agenda would be Eric Bergman for the Sustainability Committee. Do we have a motion to? I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second that motion. Yeah. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, next on the item is for the Human Rights Committee student members, uh, Jose Rodriguez and Leah Scopa. Obviously, we just heard from Tom. So do we have a motion to approve those two student members? I'll make that motion. I'll a second. second. Any other further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, now we're on to the Blight Hearing Board and Blight Officer. Um, so I have a conversation about this. I know a couple of people have approached Carl. Um, obviously, Jane just spoke here. So um, there needs to be a three-member hearing board. 
So we have had some people that have come forth. I don't know if we want to make a final decision or if there's names that people have heard from or people that they've heard from. I'll just let Carl speak quickly uh, to the couple of people that he spoke to, and obviously we have Jane, um, and then we can kind of take it from there. As I noted at the last meeting, uh, Dave Adams expressed interest, who's currently on the <coughs> Harbor Commission, and then uh, former town council member Tim Guerra also expressed an interest. And do you want to explain the role of the hearing board for people who may not, or sure. do you want me to do it? I do. The, the hearing board is part of the updated ordinance for blight. Uh, it's meant to be the a hearing board when an individual wants to contest a determination of blight as found by the blight officer uh, in order to have uh, by state statute in order to have penalties associated with a violation of blight you have to have a hearing officer or a hearing mechanism in this particular case it would be a hearing board of three individuals carl i'm sorry i missed the f i missed the first yeah. name i got jane i got tim who was the other name dave adams dave adams thank you can i ask a question at this point mm -hmm. so looking for a blight officer how can we um publicize the fact that we are looking for someone for that position I mean we are looking for or are we looking for that I mean this is a discussion for the town manager and the building official correct? The, the ordinance says that the the blight officers are the town manager or his designee and the building official or his designee so the way the old ordinance read was first selectmen or their designee so we were operating with the designee of the the first selectman that's how we're continuing to operate right now uh, Richard and I have to have a conversation about who we're going to so, designate so if someone was was interested at the end of the day they would go to the town manager and let you know that they are interested if they were interested in being deputized yes okay and is there some way to I mean be, clearly you and Richard who happens to be here um is uh have to have that conversation but when you have come to a conclusion is there going to be some um publicity for the fact that we perhaps would be looking for a blight officer if we don't address it with internal resources already identified it's a non it would be a non-paid position oh i know so i know thankful okay I have a comment to it. Um, I think it's very important everybody understands the legal ramifications of the position. When you put people in this um, type of position, they need to have a very full understanding of what is considered blight. And probably somebody has some sort of land use um, uh, responsibilities at some point in their past history who has analyzed that type of language understands how to interpret that kind of language this also needs to be somebody who's unbiased in the community um, we certainly had issues in the past where um, blight has become um, <clears throat> targeted towards people based on who they were in the community so i think it's very important this becomes a very unbiased position and a position with somebody who has legal understanding because we do not want the town to get into a very long embroiled uh, legal matters because it will cost the town. That was just my thoughts on it. Anyone else? I mean, I think that, that the ordinance that we put in place is hopefully going to eliminate a lot of that. Obviously, in the past, there was no hearing. There was no hearing board that somebody can go to. Um, you know, and obviously, blight is an issue in our town. Everybody knows it. Everybody sees it. Um, so I think this ordinance that we have in place um, will hopefully alleviate some of that and make people feel more comfortable that they can come forward and that the people that have been, you know, accused or, you know, if the, you know, as far as the blight goes, that they will have a, a non-biased, you know, conversation with three individuals that, you know, um, can make a decision going forward. So I think at least this is the first step to get this whole process moving. I think we've heard a lot about it in the past, and it's something I think that the council has to act on. So, you know, whether or not we want to wait and maybe confirm, I don't know if, I know Carl talked briefly to Tim. I don't know if you know we would like to follow up with that as you know as well to see if he's definitely something that he'd be interested in doing, um, and then maybe table this till the next meeting, and then you know go forward with any of these appointments at the next meeting. 
and then maybe open it up and see if there is anybody else that may be interested in doing it. So, I mean, I think at this point, maybe if we're comfortable with just tabling this until the next meeting, yeah, then at least we can, you know, kind of move forward at that point. But I, I would say that uh, I would like to get it finalized next meeting because we'll yeah. get it moving, get Absolutely. the process moving. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So let's get it done. All right. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. right. Any motion to table? Yep. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to the Police Pension Committee. Um, this again is will be an appointment. I'm looking for maybe a motion to appoint here. Reappoint, obviously, Ed Testman is on this currently, uh, and then appoint Tom Hollinger uh, to the Police Pension Committee. So if we can look for a motion to approve Tom Hollinger and to Ed Testman to the Police Pension Committee. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, just in terms of background, Police Pension Committee does um, manage the, obviously the pension and has to have some sort of background, financial background. I'm just curious. I don't know everybody's background, Tom Hollander's and or Ed Tessman's, as um, they have specifically have those qualifications. They do. Tom, you can speak to your qualifications if you want. I've been a banker for 50 years. Your whole life. <laughs> so, yes. uh, I was formerly on the pension committee when I was on the Board of Finance. Um, I'm familiar with uh, with it, with what what's necessary. Uh, I know we don't meet that often, but <clears throat> um, I did it for several years while I was chairman of the board of finance, and uh, look forward to doing it again. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We'll look for the motion then to appoint uh, Tom Holger and Ed Testman to the police uh, pension committee. We have the motion. Oh, well, I'm sorry. The second? Every, yeah. every, okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Thank you. And lastly, Town Council Liaison to Inland Wetlands Commission and Zoning Board of Appeals. This was uh, put off from the last meeting. Uh, currently, we have pretty much everybody that has been appointed to a liaison to a committee and or um, board. Christine, you're the only one that hasn't been. Would you be willing to take this on? Um, I don't think that night is something I can participate on, unfortunately. All right. Happy to serve on a different one if it's on a different night. Okay. But this is what we have left, so. Um, I mean, at this point, table it again. Okay. Make a motion to table this appointment again. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Thank you. On to item number five, which is the School Roofing Project Committee. Obviously, this is the end all of this committee um, and all the work. Obviously, congratulations and thank you to all the people that worked on this committee for many, many years. Um, at this point, it's basically looking for just a motion to uh, adjourn this committee. Um, but once again, thank you to everybody that served on this and worked on this project. So at this point, that's what we will look for is just a uh, motion to um, the School disband. Roofing Committee Project Committee, right. So disband that committee. So moved. A second. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah. As a member of that committee, I'd just like to say I'd like to publicly announce uh, Mary Ann O'Donnell was the superintendent. She was on the committee. The chairman was Mike Horniak, Jack Sherbin, and Gonzalo Carrion from the school maintenance department. I just wanted to add that uh, this has been a long, drawn-out thing, as you know, for many years, four or five phases. It finally puts a cap on every roof on all the schools in our town. And hopefully they're good for at least 25, 30 years because that's all the warranties that we got. Uh, I just wanted to give a comment about this Gonzalo carry-on. I mean, in the last year or so, that man really went above and beyond working with our works of the clerk, uh, uh, and things of that nature, it was very, I just wanted to comment the man. He was up on the roof all over the place, besides his duties with the regular Clinton education, uh, watching over uh, all the maintenance department. The guy really went out, out of his way. And uh, I just wanted to say, because this gets overlooked a lot, uh, some of the remaining money that we Saves 
on one project, I think it's the uh, Joel School, we actually came in $945,000 under. And on uh, the Elliott School, we came in $149,000 approximately. And uh, so I just let the taxpayers know that sometimes these committees do work, work hard. For, we had great architects. We worked hard with them. And uh, just want to let the town know that we're just not rubber stamping things and spending their money. We, we really did a good job on spending money here. Also, I mean, out of total projects that we did spend, hopefully I think the percentage that we will get back reimbursed from the state is in the neighborhood of about 46%. So we will get a sizable amount of money back from the state, hopefully this fiscal year, but if not, definitely next year. So I just want to say to that committee, and there was other people on that have left because it's been going on for, like I said, four, five, six years, eight years. Uh, thank you to all those individuals that did that work and stayed with it. Thank you, Dennis. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Thank you again, everyone. <coughs> uh, next item is number six, the council discussion on future projects. Does anybody have any comments, questions? I got a comment, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, just something that I wanted to put up for discussion. So, um, I, you know, I, I got the new orientation pack, package from Carl, and um, my first thought was, well, sh we need to go in and review the goals. They probably should be updated every year. Um, I'm going to pass this around. And um, so when I started going through the goals, which I'm passing around there, the, the goals, as Carl would, would say in the orientation package, should be long-term for the betterment of the town. And they're very well written, and they're, they're not, sh not short-term goals that are written in here, if I have the right ones here. They're, 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 they're high-level strategic goals. So as a committee, I don't think we really need to update them, uh, maybe tweak them a little bit, but they're, they're very good. What, what, I, what I expected to see when I went in there was more s specific something for projects, and I think we need to drill down to the next level. So underneath the, that second thing um, is a project log, and so what I, what I would like to see is for us as a committee to, to fill this project, something similar to this. I'm not, I'm not, you know, married to what it looks like or anything like that. But, you know, I've worked in corporate business for 30 years, m multiple companies, and whenever we have a project, we have like a log like this, and it makes for an efficient meeting. And really, most importantly, as a council, we fill this out with five, six, seven things. We prioritize them and we give it to Carl. And, and I talked to Carl about it. Um, you know, he, he wants direction from us and prioritization of what he should be focusing on. So I, I wrote some things in here, but don't get lost in what's written here. Uh, you know, I, we would fill this in as a committee with, you know, maybe we have a, a separate workshop or we do it in, a, in, in this session, I don't know. But we fill it out with you know eight things, and we prioritize it. And then each meeting, we you know quickly can go through this and say, all right, how where does this stand? Where does this stand? And and you know Carl said that he would like somebody from the town council to be assigned to each project, so it's not all on his plate. And they report on it together. They work on it behind the scenes, and then when we come to this meeting, we report on it. So, um, I'd like to make you know uh, a proposal that we we start using something like this as, as a project log. I agree. I think that it would be it would almost force us to address issues that are all around us. For instance, the one that screams at me is the ARPA money and we have a budget coming up fast and furiously and I'd really like to be able to put that on the table talk about the public hearing 
talk about the public meeting, schedule them for January, get that done before we're knee deep in budget. I mean, it's money waiting for us to spend. And I think that that should be a, a fun and easy job. Anyone else? Um, I, yep. I think this is terrific. I think it's a great idea. And off the top of my head, I would like to add um, a senior services. How are we addressing that? And <clears throat> um, now that we, I understand, have an employee tasked with getting the ball rolling, I think um, I personally would like to stay on top of something like that and see how that's progressing. I think this is a terrific idea. Right. And, and probably the, more valuable than yeah. the liaisons where you can actually read the minutes. But, yeah. yeah. And this is a Excel spreadsheet. I just printed it out so that we had something to look at. You know, I, I don't know what the protocol is for emailing around, but you know, we could email this around if that's allowed and you know and have it sort of a working document. Anyone else? I mean, I think it's a great idea as well. I mean, in some of the stuff that, I mean, this is why this is, there's an ongoing agenda item, item that we have on here, which is the council um, discussion on future projects. So it's something that we had spoken about in the past that we needed to make sure that we stayed at the forefront of the things that we wanted to get done in town that we are working on. Um, a lot of the things that basically the bigger projects are the things that we're working on, you know, are kind of more, more so long-term goals. But I understand that keeping them at the forefront, making sure that we're still, talking about it there's discussions about it so that people understand we are obviously Pearson you have listed on here that's an ongoing project that that Carl's worked on since he got here so yeah. you know that that's something that's uh, you know a future project that down the road you know once things get worked out on that end things that some of the things that we can't talk about or you know that we've had discussions about in executive session so um, I think it's a great idea I think every two weeks obviously we meet you know so these discussions that we can have that list these and then maybe every meeting come back and and have it be a working document and have it be you know there are things that people are interested in doing you know committed to doing there Rob I'm sure I'm sure some things that more people are interested in doing and working on than others but at least it is a working document and it's something that we can discuss as we have in the past um, but you know just something more concrete I guess um, so and again we can't if, yes Carl needs direction from us but there's also stuff that I don't think we need to pile on and you know, and give him a laundry list of stuff, you know, that he would need to do knowing that he has other jobs and responsibilities with the town as well. So the council itself has to take on a lot of this as well um, before we kind of filter it off to Carl, maybe to finalize or to, you know, or questions that we may have as a council talking about it. Are there, you know, things that we need more information that we would need would be something that Carl could help us with. So. May I ask how we might move this ARPA along. Do I make a motion for this to happen? Um, I really would personally like to see this, um, the public being involved sooner than the public hearing and meeting because they do need to hear about this rather than be surprised. Mm -hmm. And then schedule those for January so we can get going. How does that happen? How do I make it? Yeah, I mean, we've discussed this at length in the past and I think everybody on the council, the new members have gotten the, uh, the information that we had talked about in the past. Um, there was a October, end of October deadline on a plan that we needed to submit to the Treasury, which obviously was extended out until April. April. So, you know, we had time, you know, obviously to look at it because people were, once we discussed it, then there were more things that we wanted to, to look into because, believe it or not, yes, there's money that we need to spend, but we're also, there's directives as, to far, as far as what we can spend the money on. So the issue became, you know, what can we spend this money on and where is it best spent? So. Yes, I guess those are conversations that we can have. Um, I don't even know if there's a final, I don't think we've discussed that final list of items that we want to put on this. I believe Carl said that it would involve a workshop with us all. We should have a workshop yeah. for the council to. For us as a council first to get to that list of items that we want to have on this. So I mean, if that's something that, you know, that we should, uh, we should work towards doing, then we can arrange for a workshop. So we can sort of finalize um, kind of a, a laundry list of items that we would like to spend this money on and then at that point we can present that to the public may we have that workshop before our next meeting um, could we that depends on everyone's availability yeah, I, mean, that, I mean we can send an email out to everybody and see if everybody's available to have a, a meeting okay so we'll, we can do that mm -hmm. okay great thank you yeah we can try to get that done anyone else all good 
So the next step on this log, maybe I can send it to you, Chris, and you can send it out to everybody, and everyone can sort of look at the list and fill it in, sure. fill in what, what they want. Okay. And maybe pick pick a pick one of them to be the like head person. Yeah, I mean, I think that the discussion, you know, whether or not we discuss it as a council as a, as a group, I think, which is what we probably want, is more input from the whole council. Um, I think that would be more beneficial so that these items that we have on this list that we as a council discuss it under this agenda item that we have every two weeks and then it, it's open for discussion amongst us all. I think would be the best thing because then everybody would have their opinion and you know can speak you know to that. Good. Anyone else? All right we will then move on to chairman's report. I really don't have much. Um, the one thing I guess that um, Christmas and Clinton is back on Sunday, so obviously that's going to be something that we haven't had the past couple of years. So um, just, you know, obviously put the word out. I know it's out there, but uh, it's something that is really a great, um, you know, great thing for this town. People do come out and not only people from our town, but from all over. So um, I think that's something that is great that we're back and up and running with that. Um, and then lastly, just want to actually congratulate all the student athletes that participated in sports on this fall season. Um, there was a lot of success with our soccer teams, both boys and girls, um, and also with the football team who unfortunately lost last night, but uh, have a lot to be proud of uh, for what they did, obviously with a new coach coming on. So uh, obviously congratulations to all those student athletes that participated uh, in fall sports. That is it for me, uh, town manager's report. Uh, you have my written report, uh, the historic preservation grant for Commerce Leffingwell as a historic district. The study grant uh, is supposed to be on, on the agenda for later this morning with the State Historic Preservation Office, uh, so they'll be making a decision to make that grant award in an hour and a half. Uh, so we'll see where, where we stand with that. I know Peggy Adler is going to be tuning into the meeting to watch uh, watch what the decision is and if there's any questions she can respond to SHPO. Uh, at your next meeting I'm going to have two items that I'm going to be looking for council concurrence on. Uh, so first is with Mira to sign a new agreement which at least sees our solid waste being dealt with through Mira until the end of the project which is five more years. Uh, involves shipping waste out of state and uh, if there's other state public policies that intervene uh, that address what solid waste is how solid waste is handled uh, that will be uh, to be determined but we do need to amend our agreement with Mira that's been in place for a number of years uh, this for those of you that were on the council before eliminates our opt-out out of Mira that was a flexibility before the request is that that flexibility go away in order to ensure dedicated waste streams. The dedicated waste stream allows them to get cheaper pricing to ship garbage to the west. There is new solar plus battery back. Uh, the other item I'll have uh, need some council action on is participation in a uh, opiates class action settlement. Uh, these things are working their way through the court system. The first up is a settlement with Johnson & Johnson. Um, every municipality is being encouraged to participate and sign up as a registered participant. While it may not mean direct dollars to us, it will mean more dollars to the state of Connecticut, which then theoretically would percolate out to the local level. The dollars have to be restricted to responding to uh, opiate uh, overdoses and the uh, knock-on effects of that in individual communities um, so I need authorization from the council before signing any any papers to to release a claim against Johnson & Johnson. I have a question related to that. Um, quite a while ago I had sat down with the police chief to discuss exactly what the process would be and there was a requirement that the town actually provide the data as to the number of call outs and hours associated with it at the time the police chief said he was not able to um, uh, accrue that data through the process that they have in their police department has that changed and um, how much time will be associated with staff at the police department to 
um, account for all the information that would be required if it is required that information hasn't been required okay. so it's simply signing off as somebody who's interested is this a different um, because you've mentioned Johnson and Johnson the previous one was the class action lawsuit that was coming out of the Attorney General's office that was the um, I apologize I can't remember the uh, the larger class action this is a larger class action lawsuit that goes across the country and it's being coordinated through Attorney General's office and Connecticut's Attorney General did join the class action is this the same one from approximately three years ago or is this a different one I'm not sure what was going on three years ago this is Johnson and Johnson the others are still in pipeline okay so I, I guess I'd just like clarification because again the police chief did indicate that in the past we wouldn't have been able to participate and if it is the previous one um, that is still building and at some point if we are going to have to provide that documentation for the town to be able to be awarded any funds uh, we are not being asked for that information so that's that's all I can tell you right now we're not being asked for that information we're being asked to participate we're not being asked to provide information nothing coming out from the AG's office or CCM or other agencies are saying you have to provide that information okay um, included in the cog report is forward progress at the regional level creating an economic development district uh, which is the first step to securing more federal funding for economic development in this area uh, our region is the only part of the state of Connecticut that does not have a comprehensive economic development strategy or SEDS which is the key to getting federal dollars to support economic development activity um, so the cog is going to apply to the state to be designated as a regional economic development district the Economic Development Agency at the federal level is going to fund the SEDS study to be completed uh, and assuming that that's accepted by the state then ultimately accepted by the feds then the region can be eligible for more uh, dollars to encourage better economic development in the region which those dollars have gone to other parts of the state but not this part of the state um, two items I did flag in my report is needing more guidance from the council on uh, so first was facility use policy there's been a request to waive some of our fees um, we normally charge people a rental fee to use the building and then there is a fee for the custodian uh, the request is that Clinton based nonprofits not be charged the facility fee and only pay the custodial fee so a Clinton based for-profit or a non Clinton based entity would still pay the, the, uh, the building fee um, looking over the last two years of fee experience I can't really you know sometimes a for profit a nonprofit pays sometimes a nonprofit doesn't pay so it's kind of been uh, up and down it's not a huge whack to the budget it's maybe three to four grand a year is what the, the total generated revenue is out of these facility use fees um, depends on what room they're using and for how long so the smallest fee is fifty dollars the largest fee five hundred um, but then those that have longer events obviously rack up more so I would need to amend the policy and bring that back to the council if that's your desire uh, I just need some feedback that that's where you want to go so that I can write up a policy for action I think waiving the fee for nonprofits would be probably the way to go. Yeah, I think I that agree. sounds like a good idea. Yeah. It would certainly create more equity in terms of um, the different organizations because currently there is some policies that have been unspoken for a very long period of time and they don't always get applied equally. So um, having it on the books would certainly help that. Good. Right. I'll prepare that for your next meeting uh, next item I wanted some uh, blessing on was the wayfinding signage uh, so when I prepared the steep grant for the facade program I also included that we would be doing some wayfinding signage to update the signs at um, com at Commerce Street and Grove that direct traffic down towards the shoreline 
and then we were going to try and update the, the sign that's located at exit 63. Uh, I sent out to you uh, mock-ups of what it would look like at the two primary locations. We don't have the, the mock-up yet for exit 63. Uh, I just want to make sure that the council is okay with this from an appearance standpoint. Uh, we think we're okay with the DOT. It's a like-for-like -like replacement, so we don't believe we've got DOT issues. Uh, it's really just more whatever the local decision-making process is. In this particular case, it uses a design that uh, was developed previously. I don't think the town council acted to approve it. We're now actually going to put it in use if these designs go forward. So I just want to make sure that this is something that the council is okay with before we start placing orders and gearing up. I just have a question on it. The design looked great, but I don't know if I was supposed to focus on the names that are on it, but is there is there a reason one one business would be on it and one wouldn't be or, or is there a re you know that there is like five business replace like for like so what you've got there are the businesses that are currently on those signs at present so it's the, the what i'm looking for is the the top of the sign for the council to bless the aesthetics yeah from a policy standpoint the edc has talked about how we should be positioning should we put new people up there keep the same people don't put anybody up there so the conversation was at their level like for like, keep the existing people on who are existing businesses. Um, I just would like to comment on that. I, I think we're opening ourselves up to a can of worms. Um, in the past, there's been a lot of controversy in town as to which names are going on those signs. There's been no fee associated with it and no application. So either the town goes through a process of managing it publicly and allowing people to either bid or apply to be on the sign in a rotating fashion, which then puts more um, uh, responsibility, admin responsibility on potentially your office, Carl. Um, the other option which was discussed a while ago was standardizing signage. And, and I will speak to this because this is something I've been working on through pretty much my entire career doing master planning for towns and cities around the world where we actually did signage to install um, that was consistent and spoke to the community. And typically what you do is you uh, do directional signage, which is train station, downtown, arts district, town hall, post office, and that directs people around town and it creates a standard for people to see. Um, parking, which has been a, a huge issue in the town, um, it'd be great if we had signage that directed people to the parking. Um, so that would be my recommendation is to stay away from directing people to specific businesses. Um, only because, again, we're opening ourselves up to that issue which has been the same um, conversation as to who goes on the signage and standardize them across town in terms of typical city town directional signage, which is the generic terms. Just my recommendation though. I'd like to see both, to tell you the truth. I think that, I mean, hopefully ARPA will be able to cover some of that for under tourism. I don't know. This, we'll is, uh, this okay. is under a separate grant. Okay. So I, we already no, have these No, but dollars. I mean, perhaps <laughs> further signage, adding to what it is that you have there. So right now, basically, we're looking at a like-for-like -like signage. What you need from the council is a blessing on, obviously, the signage as far as the name and the heading of this. And as far as everything else goes, that's really not even kind okay. of what we're discussing right now. The branding is the one thing that was has not been adopted by the council, okay. so That's where we're at. Okay. this would be moving forward with that, and I'm looking for that the council is okay with that so that that becomes a theme going right. forward. Okay. okay. So as a council, are we good with that? Okay. Can I ask another question? In the, who, who would oversee the future of these signs? I mean, if there's a new business or a business leaves and the businesses are listed on there who would um oversee keeping the signs updated and tidy well painted and all that would that be the town manager or would that would you hand this off to say the edc uh that keeps it all under the town umbrella so we can figure out what part of the town umbrella uh, it's clear that the signs were not well maintained going forward some people painted and updated other people didn't paint and update some are difficult to read others are not difficult to read right so right and I think the uniformity and the upkeep is is key to um, 
you know, making it uh, uh, relevant to the situation. That's why I'm asking, it seems to me as though people were just creating a plaque and putting it up there from time to time. I don't know who they were going to. There was, for there was some consistency in look. It's just at the beginning. No consistency in maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. some of them were updated. The shade of blue was maybe lighter on one than darker on another. And some have gold so, filling and some don't. And yeah. So, so that's I mean, my, that's a concern. Is, well, I mean, I think uniformity, I mean, obviously is, is important and that's what it should be. So, so I think this is the is, first step. Who over who? We're gonna have Carl paint it when they get when they start shipping. He said he'll paint. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, no, but I mean, that's a that's a key element. Right, who but I mean will, that's this is the first step of it. From now, right. So, you know, paint. we good with the conformity? Yes. Okay. Then we're gonna put everything else in process. The EDC obviously, you know, Carl made reference to as far as that whole process goes. So. I mean, it's just, again, having something that's here, that's been approved by the town, and a, and a kind of a procedure in place going forward so that everybody knows how it will be handled going forward. In the past, the Public Works has managed some of the signs in town, and they consistently work with the same vendor if this is the vendor we're ultimately choosing. So that's another option. Yeah. I mean, again, that's, you know, Carl will get that direction and take care of all the stuff. And yeah. moving forward with yeah. regular maintenance expense. So we're good with what we've been presented today mm -hmm. just for yeah. clarity we're not talking about the content within the sign now that is correct wait a minute wait a minute are you sure no the, the. Huh? were we talking about the content i was looking for direction on the branding piece which comprises the top component right. if you want to discuss the bottom part I'd leave that up to you guys to discuss that. If you want to go through that process, you're more than welcome to go through that process. I mean, I think that's a discussion down the road. <coughs> okay. Right? I mean, because there's got to be some well, sort can of... can it be down the road? I guess Carl's looking sort of, can it be down the road and we, we have, to have to start to set things moving. in motion? So if right, we're going right. to order and whatnot, I need to know what we're ordering. So if you mm -hmm. want to have right. like for like but, and have the individual businesses there, mm -hmm. then that's fine and we place the order to that effect and a like for like alleviates any other problems that we may have with the DOT DOT is only concerned about the sort of the pegs that go in the ground mm -hmm. so it's mass of the sign the configuration of the sign how it gets uh, attached that's their overriding concern that it's not going to be something new something that's stone something that's going to cause more issue from a traffic safety standpoint so this general framework means we can move quickly with with the DOT and not get get hung up in that bureaucratic box if you want to change speaking, the content that's up to you to decide when then speaking to that term I agree with uh, Christine that uh, if there's not parking something saying parking someplace on there that should be on there because that is important to the people they come down especially visitors coming in they don't know where to our secret parking lot is behind short TV and you know all that they just look at Main Street and say oh man where am I gonna park you know on these little street so I agree that if there's something that doesn't direct people to the adequate parking it should be on that sign or a sign somewhere because if we want people to come downtown they have to know where to park as Carl said this isn't the the issue just now, but I well, agree it has with to you. Be, I guess. But you I, said I agree with you. There should be more signage, but it's not in this package. I agree with you. There should definitely be more signage. So there'll be no parking at all on either one of these signs. No. Well, okay, all right. I just want to understand that. When at Grove, there is no parking near Grove. Right. That's all directional to. Oh yeah, keep that going goes down downtown Grove to the shore. To, to go right. down to the shore and what's immediately in it. Commerce would be the one where you'd put on parking. And I guess the arrow would go. Yeah. Could we do that? Uh, there's a slot there. If you look Is there the, a slot there for that? If you look at the bottom. Uh, there's a yeah. slot there. I, I would like to make the suggestion then that the parking be added to the bottom of that sign to direct people to take a left and go to parking. If there's a slot there and nobody else's name is on it, that helps. 
So another element that is typical on a signage that is being developed across the country is you usually put the number of feet and or number of miles. Either you could do it walking and or distance for driving as well, which is very typical on uh, wayfinding signage. And unfortunately, if we don't add that, I think we're not keeping up with the times in terms of directing people. Um, parking's great if we can't tell them 200 feet, uh, 0.4 miles, people are gonna keep just driving. They're not gonna know where to go. Well, I, I'm not trying to be facetious, but when they take that left, they'll know. You only got 100 feet before you, you hit You only the got 100 feet, you're either going to hit that stone bridge <laughs> that, that you can't walk under now or take a right. But I agree with I you. I'm not, trying to be, I'm not trying to be funny or make funny or anything. But, yeah, I, I, I do agree that, you know, if you want, I don't know, do you put... On each one of those going down towards the water and all, you want to say one, two miles or? That's what's pretty typical with standard signage that's going on right now. You do directional signage with the amount of distance, especially the one at 63, exit 63, that's going to be important. Oh, that's there. different, right? Yeah. We're not dealing with that right yeah. now. 63 needs a different, a different look. This. And a different no, I agree with you about 63. But, but I mean, I mean, typically when you come up with a signage program, you do it cohesively, you do it holistically and you do it all at once. So you determine how much signage you need, where they're gonna be, and assess the number of um, locations. But that's a, you know, that's a very big project. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what EDC is up for that task. Or whether they are the body that should be assigned to such a thing either. Well, I mean, my personal opinion is on these little signs here in the center going to the shore, that's not a long trip. It's only a mile or two, so. I don't think it would be necessary on them, but maybe in the future on that one at 63, that might be something to think about. I mean, that's just my personal, but, but I would like to see that park in the, the last slot. So as far as this discussion as presented with a, an addition of a parking <coughs> signage good. on the last? Yes. For directional to that? Yes. Good. Good? Yeah. Tom? Yep. That's fine. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? That's it. Good. Thank you, Carl. Good. Uh, item number nine, which is the town council liaison reports. Is there anybody that has anything to report? I don't think anybody's been to meetings yet, right? No. All right. Nothing there. Then we're looking for a motion to adjourn. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stain? Thank you. Thanks for that suggestion.